Okay. Okay, um, today we're going to look at um, first principles and finding the derivative using first principles in this thing called the Newton quotient. Um, you're given this in your formula sheet. It says f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now what this whole thing's about is really it's just a gradient. And in the top here, this part is really just the change in y. And h is the change in x. And calculus is all about that little h part getting very, very small. It gets really tiny. In fact, we let it approach zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a question. Say you were given f of x equals 3x squared minus f. You're told to <coughs> determine the derivative <coughs> from first principles. So here we go, yeah, right? F prime of x equals the limit as h approaches zero, and all I'm doing is using this formula here. Now, f of x plus h, I just, instead of x, I put in x plus h, and I square it, minus five, and then minus f of x. Well, there's f of x, it's three x squared minus five. Well, there's the first step. Then I multiply x plus h times itself, and I get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And here I can see I'm going minus x squared and minus minus 5. Be careful of that. That's plus 5. The 3 gets multiplied by these three things here, and I get 3x squared, 6xh, and 3h squared, 3h squared there. Okay, now some things start to cancel. The 3x squared minus 3x squared the minus 5 plus 5, they all just leave. And you've got 6hx, 6xh plus 3h squared. You factor out the h. Got it. You factor out the h. And hey, you've got an h on the bottom, and this is really good news. We won't be dividing by this thing that's going to approach 0. So we go h divided by h, it cancels. We just get 6x plus 3h. Now, all that algebra was, purpose of it all was to try and take that gradient and reduce it into something so that when you let h approach zero, you can see exactly what the gradient or rate of change is. And if, if, if h approaches zero, then three times something super close to zero will be nothing. The limit, it'll all approach 6x. So we say the derivative is 6x using first principles. We'll look at one more example here. Now, this one's a little tougher. It says f of x equals 2 over x. Um, okay, so we put it down. Well, the first step's pretty easy. f of x plus h. Instead of x, we put x plus h minus f of x, which is 2 over x. Well, that doesn't seem so bad. We get the first mark. It's pretty easy. But now it takes a little bit of tricky algebra. Maybe not all so, so tricky in a way. If you want to combine these two fractions here, what you have to do is find a common denominator. And the common denominator is x times x plus h. You multiply the two things in the bottom to get a common denominator. And then you cross multiply. 2 gets multiplied by x, and this 2 gets multiplied by x plus h. That's the way you would combine any two fractions if you were subtracting, and that's what you do here. Okay, all, all Mr. Autry has done, he's taken this h and put it over here, 1 over h, multiplying by 1 over h. He wants that h out of there. Okay, we've got minus 2x minus 2h. Hey, that's good. 2x minus 2x. We've got x squared plus xh. Okay, now we've got minus 2h times 1 over h. Well, that h cancels with that h. And you're just left with minus 2 in the top. Now. This is in a form where if we let h approach zero, we can work out what the answer is going to be. Um, if we let h approach zero, we won't have zero on the bottom because there's still x squared here. But zero, any, it, something infinitely close to zero multiplied by anything is going to be really close to zero. So the, this just falls away. And that's why the limit as h approaches zero of the change in x, and we just did a whole bunch of algebra to get it into this simple form, 
the answer is just the minus 2 over x squared. You could write it as minus 2x to the minus 2. But anyways, that's, the, um, that's how you do it. That's a bit more challenging, but that's it for today. Okay. So, so long.